Today on 10 Minute Tours, we are visiting beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston has a rich history and there are many interesting things to do and places to see. Here are 10 of our favorites. The Angel Oak is a 4 to 500 year old southern live oak tree on Johns Island in Charleston. It is known for its huge canopy that spans over 17,000 square feet. The land it sits on was owned by several families, including Martha and Justice Angel and their descendants, and was purchased by the city of Charleston in 1991. The surrounding 17 acres were purchased by Low Country Land Trust in 2012 to protect the area from development in order to preserve groundwater and nutrients for the tree. It is free to enter the park, but donations are appreciated. The Charleston City Market is a historic open-air market complex. The old location, which was where the City Hall is today, burned down in 1796. The new market's land was donated in 1788 to the city on the condition that it would always be used as a city market. The complex spans over four city blocks and is crowned with Market Hall, a Greek Revival building built in the 1840s. The hall has housed Charleston's Confederate Museum since 1899. At first, the market was a farmer's market where beef and produce were sold. Its location made it an ideal place for fishermen to market their catch. Today, the market is a place where local artists come to display and sell their art and where vendors sell souvenirs, jewelry, and Gola sweetgrass baskets. These baskets have been made with all local materials for the last 300 years by the Gola Gigi people who are descendants of West African slaves. Each basket is a work of art few know how to duplicate. Next time you're in Charleston, take home one of these pieces of African-American history. Horse-drawn carriage tours are a great way to see Charleston. There are several different companies that work in the area. We enjoyed our tour with Old South Carriage Company, which is located just north of City Market on Anson Street. These guides really know their craft. Some of the best stories about Charleston we heard on our carriage tour. It was both entertaining and informative. An added bonus was that it was a fun and relaxing ride exploring a lot of the city all at once. In 1863, inventor Horace Lawson Hunley designed and built the H.L. Hunley, a Civil War era submarine and the first submarine to hit a target in battle. Built in Mobile, Alabama, it was about 40 feet long and about 5 feet in circumference. It was crewed with a captain and six men who turned a series of cranks to propel it. It's definitely not a place you would want to be if you were claustrophobic. In February 1864, the Confederate submarine successfully attacked the Union naval ship, the USS Housatonic, which sank within five minutes in Charleston Harbor. Unfortunately, the Hunley was still within 20 feet of the blast, so it also sank, and all of the crew perished. Its exact location was unknown until 1970 and confirmed in 1995 by a diving team. It was then raised from the harbor in the year 2000 and donated to the state of South Carolina. It is housed in Charleston in the Friends of the Hunley Museum, which is only opened on weekends. If you can't time your trip around the weekend, a replica is on display in front of the Charleston Museum. Rainbow Row is a row of 13 houses built on Bay Street between the years of 1740 and 1791. These homes were built by merchants who had their businesses on the first floor and their living area on the second floor. After the Civil War, the area started to decline until it became a slum. This all changed when Judge Lionel Ledge and his wife Dorothy purchased two of the homes in 1931. They fixed up the homes and painted them a bright pastel pink. This really brightened up the neighborhood. Over the next several years, the other homeowners started fixing up and painting their home exteriors with bright pastel colors. Even though each home is privately owned, a city ordinance now ensures the exterior colors remain unchanged. Over time, Rainbow Row has become one of the most photographed areas of Charleston, and you won't want to miss it. The Old Slave Mart Museum is a reminder of an awful period in American history that should not be forgotten. It was built in 1859 and is the last remaining slave mart in South Carolina. It was built by Thomas Ryan, a slave broker and city councilman. The facility included an auction area and a holding area. Before 1856, slave auctions were held outdoors, typically on the square near the old exchange building. However, that year a law passed outlawing public auctions making all subsequent auctions private. 
The enclosure was built in an alley between buildings and didn't have a roof. Auctions took place in this enclosure. Behind it was a holding area that was surrounded with a brick wall that was 15 to 20 feet tall. It enclosed a kitchen, a morgue, and a four-story holding area which was called a barracoon or a slave bin. Nothing can truly prepare you for the indignities experienced by these people. Conditions were poor and they were bought and sold like animals. During the Civil War, Union troops would use the slave pens to house Confederate prisoners. After the Civil War, the slave pens and the slave mart were converted into tenement housing. In the 1920s, it was a car dealership and eventually became a museum in 1938. Volunteers, many of which can trace their lineage to Charleston slaves, take you on a free guided tour. We enjoyed learning from our sweet guide, Christine. Waterfront Park is one of the most beautiful sites in Charleston, but it wasn't always this way. After the Civil War, the Charleston Harbor slowed because more ports opened up and down the eastern seaboard. This was exasperated by a fire at a steamship terminal in 1955, leaving the southern portion of the waterfront a burned-out mess. This is how it stayed until 1979, when Mayor Joe Riley organized a community effort to raise money to purchase this section of the waterfront to build a park. In 1990, Waterfront Park opened to the public. It has a matchless view of the Cooper River and the east side of the bay. The north of the park has a large T-shaped pier with a couple of huge gazebos with several large family-sized porch swings facing the water and a fantastic view. There are two fountains, including the famous Pineapple Fountain. It also has 1,000 feet of waterfront walking paths lined with palmetto trees and another path covered with oak trees finishing with another pier on the south end. The old exchange was completed in 1771 and was built over the remains of the Half Moon Battery and part of the old city wall which had been built to protect the city from both the Spanish and pirates. Over the years, it has been used for several purposes, mainly as a customs building. Before the capture of Charleston in 1780, the Americans hid a large store of gunpowder behind the walls of the exchange's basement to keep it from falling into British hands. The British never found the gunpowder even though they used the basement as a provost or dungeon to hold prisoners of war. Just eight years later, the Constitution was ratified in the exchange building, and just a few years after that, it was the site of many of the events held in honor of George Washington's visit to Charleston. The old exchange was used as a post office until it was damaged during the Civil War and was abandoned. In 1913, it was deeded to the Daughters of the American Revolution, who have managed it ever since. In 1965, archaeologists excavated part of the basement and found part of the Half Moon Battery. This is the only section of the old wall that can be viewed by the public. Fort Sumter is a very significant part of American history and is a must-see when visiting Charleston. We enjoyed stories from the National Park guides as we ferried to the fort. During President George Washington's national tour in 1791, he recommended a fort be placed in the middle of the harbor between Forts Moultrie and Johnson to make the harbor more secure. It wasn't until after the War of 1812, when other coastal weaknesses were identified, that a plan was put in place. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers finally began construction in 1829, but it was never completed. If it had, it would have been one of the strongest forts in the world. Even though the exterior was complete, only about half of the armaments were inside. On Friday, April 12, 1861, at 4.30 a.m., the Confederate troops started firing on Fort Sumter, which began the American Civil War. Artillery rained on the fort for 32 straight hours. Being outgunned and ill-prepared for the battle, Major Robert Anderson surrendered the fort on April 13, 1861, taking the U.S. flag with him. Four years later, on April 14, 1865, the same day as the Lincoln assassination, Fort Sumter held a widely announced end-of-the-war celebration. The high point was when then-retired Major General Robert Anderson raised the same U.S. flag over Fort Sumter. The Stars and Stripes once again flew over the fort and a reunited country. Originally called South Bay, or later Oyster Point, White Point Gardens is a beautiful park at the southern tip of the peninsula. Known for its view, the area has had several uses over the years. First, it was the site of all the pirate hangings during the 1700s. 
The famous gentleman pirate, Steed Bonnet, and all of his crew were hanged here after the pirate blockade of Charleston in 1718. Later, a battery of cannons was set up here to protect Charleston from overseas threats. In 1840, the area housed a public bath which was torn down in 1881. During the Battle of Fort Sumter, people from town lined up to watch as cannons fired from Fort Johnson. In 1913, a seawall was built to make the area much more useful. Today, it is a beautiful tree-covered park lined with cannons along the southern perimeter. It also has a couple of statues memorializing both the Revolutionary and Civil Wars, as well as a monument to Steed Bonnet. Well, that wraps up our tour of our favorite things to do and places to see in Charleston. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. To be notified when we upload new videos, click on the bell. If there is a place you'd like us to talk about in the future, feel free to tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching!